previously on the bill. OK, you need to put that down really carefully. Missy Keene is seriously injured! It's Callum. You're no good to anyone if you're going to be like this. It sounds like we're dealing with one individual. So the bomber's still out there and he isn't finished with us yet. Finally, I need to uh, go through the arrangements for Emma's funeral. The service is at four o'clock. The bus will be leaving here at 3.30 on the dot. I need you all here ten minutes before that, OK? Any questions? Good to see you, Sarge. Any Sierra Oscar units, deal with the burglary now at Murillo Street, Timber Yard. Will, Sally, you can deal with that. Two on shots, dealing. Ben, go with them. They may need some backup. I can help. Ben, you go. Show two to a sign. Callum, I need you here today. It's going to be very difficult. Your priority will be this funeral and to give any help and support to anyone who needs it, OK? Oh. So is he back on duty then? No, but the superintendent wants him to lead the bearer party as he was the first one to find out. Right. So what if he has another pop then? Well, I trust a pair of you to show the utmost professionalism, leadership and respect. Today of all days. Are you all right? I spent last night with Emma's family and her dad, but... What can you say? Well, I'm sure you did great. Thank you. Morning. Morning. Okay, it's looking increasingly likely that this is the work of a lone bomber. His cause, as Grace said, the so-called four evils of the internet. First category, pornography. Targets, Alan Drayton, owner of the Beta Nightclub, and Michael Gilchrist, manager of the photocopy shop on Coleshaw Street. Both these were fertiliser bombs triggered by mobile phones attached to them. We know from Gilchrist's friend, James Marfield, that he received a warning letter. Visit here and I will take you out of my equation. This referred to the porn website Hummingbirds, owned by Alan Drayton. Also, there's a further connection. Gilchrist printed 500 DVD covers for Drayton for his website. Right. OK, well, the second category is incitement to racial hatred. Target, Jeff Bowman, local businessman. Secretly a member of a racist organisation. His wife intercepted the warning letter. We think the bomb was either delivered or placed at the officer's industry house by this man dressed as a courier. This image was lifted from CCTV just before the bomb went off. We're assuming he used the same method to plant the other two bombs. The third category, identity theft. Target, Carl Adams. But we're not sure why the bomber chose to make his a dummy bomb. Well, Grace seems to think it's related to the ID theft, you know, not the real person, not the real bomb. Just as well, this case he could have been blown to bits. He was showing off, using pressure pads as a possible detonator rather than his usual mobile phone trigger. Fourth category, child abuse. Even if a target has received a warning letter, a child abuser is hardly likely to break cover. You know, I think we should go back and focus on the others and find out exactly why he's choosing them. How do you feel about bringing in the two survivors, plus James Marfield, who knew Gilchrist and shared a flat with him? I agree. Right, I'll get on to Grace. Two Oscar and two one approaching the suspected burglary at the Timber Yard on Murillo Street. Two oh eight ten thirty. So Sergeant Stone's not back on full duty yet, then. No, making sure he's dealing with Emma's death. Can't see him sit behind a desk while Emma's killer's still out there. There's no sign of anything. It's not been forced. We'll go around. Yeah? Have you ever had to carry a coffin before? Well, I never thought I'd want to do it. As soon as it's Emma, I don't know anyone else to do it. 
Uh, false alarm. I just interrupted the manager doing a stock take. Mm. He went to happy either, he gave the usual, you know, never hear when the alarm goes off, and one time it doesn't, four of us. Anyway, he reckons the only thing he's seen this morning is a few mice, a post, and some courier guy wandering around with a crush on it. All right, well, I'll check with Cad then, make sure we've got the right address. Sure. Well, might as well look around, eh, sir? Yeah. Yeah? I'll check around there. All right. Oh, this is silly. 864. No, I'll call on myself. Near former, definitely 7 Rillo Street. Okay. Where? Sally! Sally, you all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm fine. <coughs> Flower? Yeah, I know. We sold on Mrs. D.I. Lacey. Oh. all right? Sarge, all right. Sally? Sarge? Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, sorry, I should have taken a shot. But it wouldn't have made any difference. No, I should have been it. Are you sure you don't want to go to St Hughes? Honestly, I just want to go back and get cleaned up. Come on, I'll run you back. Um, forensics want you to get out of your clothes here. I'm sorry. Right. Definitely our bomber. The only customer today was a guy in a crash helmet. Crash helmet? Yeah, had a look around for five minutes, only left. You know what's strange, girl? Why would somebody who's so forensically and procedurally aware pick somewhere that's calling with CCTV cameras? I mean, there's no way that our bomber got inside the building or even approached the warehouse without being caught on at least one camera. Maybe he wants to be seen. In a crash helmet. Well, Mick is gathering the footage, so we should know soon enough. And the bomb? Triggered by a mobile phone. PC Fletcher called it and set it off. He's playing a game with us, isn't he? Any sign of a link with Jeff Bowman and the others? Well, he's certainly not the internet. I mean, he's not even connected, either here or at home. He says he goes to church a lot. He's a part-time warden. Has he received any letters? Threats? Says not, unless this is it. Gunner, we've got CCTV footage, fella in a crash helmet. As you said, it's almost like he wants to be seen. Show that bit again. So what's he doing? He's hidden something. It's something he wants us to find. It's okay. What is it? Memory stick. What's on it? He's loading it up now. It's a link to a website. That was after the first bomb. The second? Lesson four, child abuse. By 3.30 today, there will be one less paedophile to visit. He's given us just over three hours. There's going to be another bomb. my orders. What were you doing out in the timber yard? Well, the bomb went off. I couldn't just sit here. But I thought we agreed. Mum, I know I was out of order, I'm sorry, but I'm better off on duty, honestly. Even if it's just answering the phone. All right, maybe not that, but I need to be out of my team, facing whatever they're facing. Well, as long as your team write up their statements from this morning and you check that they're right. Good. Sally, you all right? Yes, thanks, Mum. Will you take off as much time as you need? Thank you, but I'd rather keep going, you know, take my mind off things and... Yeah, and if you change your mind... And thank you, but I just want to get back to work. You're not the only one. Take care of yourselves. 
I take it you're not station bound anymore? No. From now on, I'm going to be where I'm needed. Sarge. But we both knew what Emma was like. If she wanted to go into that building, she would have done, whether you were there or not. It was her decision. Yeah, but I should have been with her. But, Sarge... Smith. Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lost it like that. Forget it. Back on duty, Sarge? Yeah. What have we got? Well, apart from the bomber's website and his new threat, CID and counterterrorism ain't sharing too much. Apparently, the warning left no target, no location. Until we find out more, I don't know what we can do. Well, I hear the courier sent at the timber yard this morning was also seen at Industry House just before the bomb went off. Counterterrorism have known about him for a few days. I'm not going to get sidelined by CID or some DI from counterterrorism. As soon as you hear anything, we'll get assigned any tasks, you let me know, yeah? We're going to get this guy. Sounds true. So, you know, if you want to take a step back on this, no one's going to think any less of you. Thanks, Sarge. I'll get off to the tech boys. Start tracing the origins of his website. Given how he knows his way around computers. I know, but law of averages, he's bound to make a mistake sooner or later. If that gives us nothing, then I'll be with my team researching Camille's sex offenders. It's 12.30. Means we've only got three hours. I'm sure it's not some sort of copycat bomber? No. The use of the word visit in his message, it's one of his tags. So we know he's going to blow up a paedophile, but we ain't got a clue which one. Well, I could think of a few. Any luck with the CCTV? We should be able to piece together the sequence of him approaching and leaving the timber yard. The only trouble is he's wearing a helmet all the time. Jeff Bowman's here, and he's not happy about being interviewed with the other target, Carl, and Gilchrist's friend James Marfield, all in the room at the same time. I thought that was the whole point. Yeah, it is. Thank you for coming. Mr. The other day, you treated me like I was a criminal, charged me with wasting police time, and now you expect me to talk to a bunch of strangers about my life. Everyone's extremely busy at the moment. A small device went off this morning. If it had contained anything other than flour, the officer who found it would now be dead. OK, I'll talk to you, provided no one else is in the room, the conversation is not recorded, I want it in writing that anything I say is in the strictest confidence, and all notes be destroyed once this case is concluded. Fine by me, as long as you don't mind me quoting you in our next press release. Press release? That's a pretty grubby threat. You think that's going to win my cooperation? There's someone out there blowing people to pieces, and I need to win your cooperation. Jeff Bowman, local businessman. Carl Adams. James Marfield, a friend of Michael Gilchrist, who died in last week's bombings. OK, first question. Have any of you seen each other before? No. Nope. We think the bomber selects his targets through the internet, hacking into sites, computers. He certainly has that expertise. And didn't you know this last week? Yes, we did. So your only clue so far is that he knows his way around the internet? The investigation is continuing on many fronts. This is just one of them. My friend died last week. For all I know, I might be his next target. We think his next target is likely to be a child sex offender. Oh, well, at least it's someone who deserves it. So as long as we're not paedophiles or the bomber doesn't think that we're paedophiles, we're OK, then. Great. Well, once he's chosen his target, he tracks them, gets to know their routine so he can build up information. He stole your identity, which means he must have watched you, followed you even. Can you think of anything even remotely suspicious in the last week or ten days? Did Michael mention anything? No. Sorry, nothing. No, it's OK. Does the website Hummingbirds mean anything to you? No. OK, um, do you have mechanisms to stop unwanted access to your computers, uh, like firewalls? Both of you? Just a pity I didn't do it sooner. I only had one installed after a virus wiped out my computer. Did you set it up yourself? No, I used some company, some tech support company. Called? I uh, uh, can't remember. I think I've got the number in my phone. Did Michael have one? Yep. Carl? No, I didn't get anyone in. I did it myself. It's easy. Canley Technology. That's the one. I used to work there. 
Canley Technology. It's the first definite link. You told the LOC? Yeah. Ben, Sally, I want you to get down to Canley Technology. We need a list of their technicians and advisors. What we're looking for are details of who repaired the bomb target's computers. So if the same name comes up... Go. We'd better tell us, though. Yeah. I'm going back in to take statements, see if I can get any more details. Good work. Oh, Governor, I think we've got something on the CCTV it's from outside the timber yard this morning. We've been looking for witnesses, but he keeps his helmet on all the time, pretending to use his phone. This time, he does make a phone call just before we lose him, look. TIU. Well, we've called him, but the only thing is he's standing next to an office block and they can't pinpoint which call comes from his phone. But we think we can. We've blown up a number of screenshots. Now, you watch him dial, look. You can't exactly see which numbers he's dialing, but you watch his thumb. You can have a good guess, look. Top left being one, move across the top right, that's three, etc. So if we can just work out who he's called. Excellent. The only trouble is we're one number short. We don't know whether it's in the middle of the end or what. Well, the longer he says over one number, chances are he's used that number twice. Run it again past TIU. Go. Right, we've got two and a half hours left. We need to move fast. <laughs> Keep me in the loop. Right, we're looking for a possible link. An employee of Canley Technology may have set up firewalls on Target's computers. OK, have they given us a list yet? No, not yet. What's taking them so long? No, it's all right, Sash. They are pulling out all the stops, but they've got to look at job reference numbers going back two years. Yeah, we're running out of time. Ben's in with the MD now. Sarge, you OK? Let's we'll stop this before somebody else gets killed. D did you ever... Did Emma know how you felt? Sorry? About her. I don't know what you're talking about. I just thought... What? She was a friend and a colleague. Is that not enough? Sergeant. We've notified all emergency services and we've got the hospitals on standby. Well, if we can't find this bomb, at least we'll be ready for it. Well, we've still got two hours. Governor, sir, we got hit on a mobile phone number. Now, it's unregistered, no surprise there. But the bomber rang a William Moore. I ran his name through checks, but nothing. We've got an address. It's Pickett Road. Well, at best, this guy Moore will know who the bomber is. And at worst, he's an accomplice, which means we've got two of them out there. We need a surveillance team. Right, Mickey, Smithy, get down there now in an unmarked car. Sit tight till we know more. Sir. Sure. Yeah, they've come up with a name, Gov. Yeah, Colin Moore, worked here until a month ago, lives on Pickett Road. It's worth the wait, wasn't it? Let's get going. Yeah, cheers, Gov. Yeah, it's Mickey and Smith here. Pickett Road now doing an obo. What? Well, a few minutes after the flower bomb went off this morning, the suspect's given someone a call on his mobile. They're checking out the guy who received it. We're in the wrong place again. Sally with me. There's only one exit, so no need to cover the back. Somebody opened a window, Gov, so there must be at least one of them at home. Right, well, hold back. I'll call CO19. Gov. Stay put. Wait for further instruction. Could be dangerous, Mickey. The place could be wired. Yes, Gov. He's leaving the house now. Just hang on a minute. He's coming out of the house. I think we should take him out. It could be the suspect. And if he's on his way, trigger the bomb. OK, stop him, but not in front of his house, in case the other one's in there. I'll see who we've got in the area. Mickey? Back up's on its way. I want Smithy to follow him. I want you to stay put and cover the house. I'm on my way down. Gov. He wants you to follow him. He wants me to stay and watch the house. Why the hell was he in such an hurry, though? <laughs> Suspect's turning into Larkfield Street. No, you see, mate, we're going to have to swap. I can't follow him anymore. Suspect running through Sherland Park.
It's Eric Oscar from DC Web. I see one male wearing black tracksuit bottoms and a maroon hoodie. Last seen running into Sherland Park via Larkfield Street. Anybody sees him, I want you to notify me of his location. There he is. No, no phone. What's... Mate, uh, Bill. Bill what? More. Who's Colin? My brother. Which one of you work for Canley Tech? He did. Where is he? I don't know. You don't know? No, he, he moved there. I don't know where he went. When was this? Uh, five, six months ago. And you haven't seen him since? Look, you can't do this. Yes, I can. You cannot do this. Right. Sally, you oh, stay here. What's the search? Just needs a minute. Is it a bomber? I don't know. I don't think so. Up, up. Now. Let's start again. And this time, don't lie to me. Where is Colin? Honestly, Come I on. do not know, I swear. When did you last speak to him, then? This morning. I, I spoke to him this morning. But I didn't say anything because I promised. I promised my wife. I promised her I'd never speak to him again. Why was that? I said, why was that? Thanks for all your help. Look at them. Can't leave fast enough. I think they'd rather let the bomber escape than risk further exposure. Complete fluke, Jeff Bowman survived in the first place. Well, that's what he told me. You think he'd be falling over himself trying to help? We're getting somewhere, though. At last. Oh, well, I hope so. Well, thanks again. Oh, my pleasure. Good work. Sir? So, is the house clear? Oh, yeah, there's no one in there, is there, Bill? No. And you'd love to show us a picture of your brother, wouldn't you? Right. Whatever you did, I hope it doesn't come back to bite us. His wife caught his brother looking at child pornography on the net and threatened to call the police. Bill said it was all some misunderstanding that Colin was just obsessed with people abusing the internet. Well, we know that for a fact. Yeah, we managed to persuade her not to call us, but the deal was he had to kick his brother out and not speak to him again. But he has been. Yeah, that was the little secret he wasn't so keen to share. There's uh, one or two photos in this album. Governor, isn't that James Marfield? Friend of the dead fella? No, that's Colin. I don't believe it. He's been in the station all the time. Get on the radio to DC Walker now. Where's Marfield? He just left. Which way? Out the front. He's the bomber. Marfield's not his real name. It's Colin Moore. He's gone. Well, a picture of Colin Moore has been circulated, but until we have an idea of where he is... He must be laughing at us. Not for much longer. I'm so sorry. Look, you had no reason to suspect him. A friend of the deceased trying to help. So where's the real James Marfield? We think he's a holiday rep in Ibiza. Our people are tracking him down. He was on the list of customers that Moore helped at County Technology. Do you think he had access to any information at some hill? Well, he knows we made a link with Canley Technology. And he had a thrill of sitting through the thick of the investigation. It's just a massive ego trip for him, like the flower bomb this morning. He's showing us the power he has over us. So where the hell's he gone? I doubt he'll run. I think he'll want to stay and finish off the job, make sure his bomb goes off, show us how clever he is. Right, well, I'll get TIU to monitor any phones and numbers that are connected to more for possible use. If you could get your lot to check whether any payments would be made to a landlord or a letting agent. They're on it already. So Moore was accused of being a paedophile. That's where it gets interesting. We ran checks. He's known to the Barton Street Jigsaw Unit, only in his case as an informant. There's no way our man's a child abuser. He doesn't fit the profile. Apparently, with information he provided, they were able to make a number of significant arrests. Barton Street haven't heard from him for five or six months. Which is around the time that Bill's wife accused him of looking at child porn. Colin's about exposing the wrongs of the internet, so he starts by reporting the abuse, but then things go wrong for him. Looks like we're getting an angle on him. I think we need to speak to his brother about the accusation, find out exactly what happened. I think that's what made him go off at the deep end. I agree. I'd like to take Grace into the interview. Sure. Do you have another number for your brother? No. After your wife caught him watching child pornography, what happened then? You left. And that was it. He didn't argue, didn't try and persuade you he was innocent. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. 
I have a three-year-old daughter. I didn't want to abandon my brother, but what could I do? And Colin had problems. Problems? He never really fitted in. He, he's not one to make friends easily. Always more interested in his studies, analyzing systems. Bit of a genius, but then that's his problem. Got him thrown out of university. He became obsessed with his work. No, I don't think they knew how to handle him. They thought he was too subversive and accused him of computer hacking. Well, that must have made him angry. He took the job at Canley Technology, but felt fixing computers was beneath him. Where did he go after he left yours? Don't know, he just vanished. We hardly ever spoke, only when he rang. He moved in with someone, but that didn't work out either. Any idea who or where that was? No. But he called him a heathen. A heathen? Colin got into religion. Started going to some church. You don't happen to know which one? I'm not sure. I think it was somewhere off Canley High Street. The timber yard. The owner, Mr Sullivan, was a church warden. Why target him? Let's find out. Grace and D.R. Lacey think they've got a lead. They're trying to get hold of Mr Sullivan, the owner of the timber yard. Unless the brother's given us the run around to. Well, Grace seems to think he's in the clear. His property has been searched and it's clean, but we're not going to take any chances. We're going to keep him here till after the deadline. Just over an hour. Any luck? Uh, Colin Moore's not in the electoral role. The council has no record of him. I'm just checking his national insurance to see if he's been employed since Candy Tech. Hello? Uh, well, Moore left his brother six months ago. And that's when we think he took on the idea of James Marfield, one of his customers at Canley Technology, and moved in with Gilchrist, which is why he knows so much about him. Mm -hmm. Left about a month ago. Well, that's it. Okay, cheers. Governor, the mobiles that Moore used, none of them are in service anymore. Apparently there was a cluster of calls made around here in Broad Lane. The only thing is they could have been made from any number of flats. We could get down there and start a door-to-door. -door. No, he'd spot us before we could get to him. Mickey, I want you to check out all the local estate agents in the area and the letting agencies. See if there's a neighbourhood watching in the area. Get Moore's photo to them now. Sir. I'll put uniform on standby. Yeah. We were right, Gov. Moore did briefly attend Sullivan's church. Sullivan was able to give us an address for him. 16 Broad Lane. See you on 19 are on the way there. Is this from the news or the public domain? No. Must have taken him himself. Up oh, close. Well, if he's bold enough to come into Sun Hill, I won't be surprised if he's at all the bomb sites. Not just down there, they're waiting. This was taken a few seconds after it went off. Sir! Take it. Still warm. We must have missed him by seconds. Then well, no wonder he knew we were coming. He's got webcams set up watching the street. That's him. There he is. Yeah, all units. The cordon at Broad Street near the junction with Stearman Road. The suspect is leaving on foot. Marching on mail. Grey jacket, James. Heading west of the back of Broad Lane. Sally, you go that way. Ben, take West Lane. Will, see if you can cut him off. Colin! 
It wasn't my fault. Glad you worked that out then. Look, I did not make her go in there. By the time they got someone to open the gate... We now have 40 minutes. Oh, great. There must be something in this computer that can link us to the intended target. I can have a look, but I might end up losing vital information. I don't think we have a choice. OK. OK, pull the plug, quick! Pull the plug, quick! Well, that's all we need. To try. He must have sent a virus to himself to destroy the evidence. That website, Everyday Friends, it looked like a child porn site. I'm going to get on to CEOPS, see if they've got any intelligence on who's behind it. Well, then we can see if there's a match on any of the names on Moore's client list from Canley Technology. Tell them to email details to the incident room. I'll get on to Mickey so he can cross-reference at the other end. There's a list from Canley Technology, all the people that Moore did jobs for. Governor, looks like Siops have sent it. Yeah. There. The name's on both lists. There's a Peter Waverley. Looks like we've just found his next target, Governor. It's this close, isn't it? We had hold of him. It's not your fault, Sarge. Like you said, it took five minutes for Sam to open that gate. I'd like to thank you personally for all the hard work you've put in today especially under such difficult circumstances. The hunt for the bomber continues, but the focus has shifted onto Peter Waverley. He's an accountant working for Hadfield Foods, and we think he might be the next target. The CID are bringing him in, and Expo officers are clearing the building. Now, I know how much everyone wants to be involved, but we have another duty to perform today. And that is to pay our respects to Emma, whose extraordinary heroism last week ended in such great tragedy. That's all. Thank you. PC Armstrong. Hello? OK, this is Emma's hat. Now, we want you to follow the procession and then put the hat on the coffin, OK? OK. Oh. This way, please, Mr Waverley. Someone will be with this shortly. Mickey, no sign of the bomb yet. Sure we got the right guy? Has he mentioned anything about the warning letters? No. Does he know why he's being targeted? He hasn't mentioned it. Seops don't want him to know, apparently. I think his partner's Peter Foring. He's married? Yep, three kids. Right, take a seat, Mr Waverley. Now, we've had information to suggest that a bomb is going to explode in about 20 minutes. We also believe that the bomber has chosen you as his next target. Me? The answer to this question will be kept in strict confidence. Have you ever accessed or joined a pornography website on the internet? No. Are you sure? Yes. Now, you were a client of Canley Technology. One of their former employees has used his knowledge of your computer to hack into it. Now, do you have any files that could be construed as being pornographic? No. Mr Waverley, this is no time for secrets. I don't have any secrets. Look, I'll cut to the chase. The reason you're the target is because the bomber thinks you're behind a website that is peddling child porn. No, I don't. No. It's not me. Whether you do or you don't doesn't matter at the moment. What's more important is he thinks you do. Is there any other reason you can think of why he might have targeted you? Look, all we're interested in is finding out where this bomb is. So if you're hiding anything... I'm not hiding anything. Where would you normally be around about 3.30? At work. Our officers are there. They can't find anything. If it turns out they're searching in the wrong place... We're wasting precious minutes. Governor, just to say the factory's now been cleared. They've had expo dogs inside and out. Nothing. Deliveries? Well, they've checked the mail room. Nothing's addressed to Mr Waverley. Nothing to look like a bomb itself. What are you talking about? The bomber forms his target, works out a routine, then he delivers a parcel. And he knows it's not going to be open until he can detonate it. Oh, my God. The charity shop. Where my wife works. 
I was supposed to be there today, but I was called to work. She phoned me to say a package was delivered there earlier on. My wife's got it. It's in the car. Where's the car? She's taken it. Where? The school run. Waverley does his wife's account once a month. Where? In Gasson Street. Now, she runs a charity shop there for the St Jude's Hospice. Waverley would have been there, but he had to go to work. And almost certainly, he uses a computer there to run his child porn website, without her knowledge. OK. And the parcel arrived at quarter to three. Well, Waverley rang her, told her to put the package in the car. And now she's on the way to school to pick the kids up. Well, let's hope Moore doesn't know that. Cos if he thinks the bomb's going off at Gasson Street, then that's where he's going to be. Right, I'm going to take a team out, focus on finding Mrs Waverley, stopping the bomb going off at the school. Right, me and Grace will handle more. OK. And we're going to need surveillance on the street. Is there any way that some of us could be excused? Because I think, with respect, that Emma would much rather I was out there trying to Funerals catch Funerals are for the living, Sergeant, not the dead. Mum, I've got to get down to that school, help with this bomb. No, but CID and backup are already on their way. Please, Mum. Indy and 99 are trying to spot the car before it even gets there. Oh, it's too late for Emma. I'm not going to be too late for this one. Mum, I really don't mind taking charge of the bearer party. Attention! Her kids are still here. She must be running late. India 99 have been over red, but there's no sign. She's not picking up the phone. Why don't we better go looking for her? Clear the area. Get the cars off the road first. We'll give her two minutes. If she's not here by then. Go on, it's Mickey. Listen, there's no sign of Mrs. Waverley at the school. The car hasn't turned up at the school. So how long have we gone? Three minutes. Well, maybe he saw us and he spooked him. It's not going to stop him, Bogov. This is his mission, his chance to show the world. And if we're here, he's also got his audience. He'll be in seventh heaven. Sooner than he thinks if CR10 get to him. He's got to be here. This one's personal. Well, right, listen up, everyone. Come on, this Remember, way. a green saloon car, oh, index yeah. number Papa 546, yeah. Hotel yeah. Victor yeah. Oscar. Yeah. There's going to be an IC1 female driving it. Yeah. So keep Move moving back. everyone inside yeah. and away from yeah. the windows, yeah? Go. He's seen us. Waverley's not in the shop. He's not coming. One more step and I will do it. I will set it off. Clear. Lift. By the left, slow march. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Waverley is sick. He runs a website. Yeah, I know. He's talked to us. Why should I believe you? It's the truth. Well, it won't matter if I press this then, will it? He's not lying. Waverley's not at the shop. His wife collected the package. It's in the back of the car. She's collecting the children, Colin. The children. I'm starting to block off three entrances. I need more people. You guys set this car up. Oh, go, go! Stand back. Mickey! No, one car. Look, you've had your protest. There's no need for any more of this, OK? No. People don't listen until they have to listen, until you make them listen. They're starting to listen now. By killing people! Look, I do not expect you to understand! Please, let her go. What, let her go so they can shoot me? Do you think I'm stupid? <laughs> 
Out of the car, please. Out of the car. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Well, there's a parcel from your husband. Out of the car. Where is it? Out of the car. Look, come on, this way. Oh, no, 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 grabbing people's attention. Yes, and you've done that. You don't need to do any more. It's all right, little one. It's OK. Come on. I'm sorry, but it just doesn't make sense. While she was out saving others, there was no one to save her. The one time she needed us the most. I'm sorry. It's done. We got it. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled, for you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. I told you I'd be there. Well done. Good reading. You did well today too, son. I heard it was close. Yeah. I think Emma would have been very proud. She was a good copper. Went the extra mile. No compromise. We should follow her lead.
first time on the bill. How's your sabbatical? Fine, thanks. Yeah, it's probably just nerves. Yeah, second thoughts. I prefer a man in a suit any day. Break it up! Oh. Ah. He's really clobbered you there. She actually. How did I go? Classic. <laughs>